Welcome to section 5.2. So now we get into the fun stuff. We're going to start integrating over regions with curvy lines. So let's start with a easy example. We're going to find the area of this region here in green, and we're going to do it by integrating the function 1 dA. Now dA is either going to be dy dx or dx dy. So the goal here is to find the limits of integration. If you're doing y first, like we are, you want to think of the region as broken up by vertical lines. Where those vertical lines start is the lower limit on y. So y is going to start at x cubed, and it's going to go to 8, because that's where those lines leave the region. The x limits are the values of x for which you have those vertical lines in your region. So those start at 0, and they're going to end when x cubed meets 8. That would be when x is 2. So the area is going to be the double integral. x goes from 0 to 2. y goes from x cubed to 8. And we're integrating the function 1. You don't have to put the 1. dy dx. Okay, now let's set up the integral doing horizontal lines first. First, we're going to do the x limits. Those horizontal lines start when x is 0, and they leave when x is. We need to solve this equation for x. x is y to the 1 third. So that's our upper limit, y to the 1 third. And then the y limits are going to be the values of y for which we have these horizontal lines. Those start at 0, and they end at 8. So a is integral 0 to 8, and then 0 to y to the 1 3rd dx dy. And you can evaluate those two integrals, and you'll see that you get the same thing. You get the area of that region. So let's do another one where we're not given a picture, we're given an integral and asked to shade the region of integration. And so it's very hard to graph an expression. In fact, it's impossible, but it's easy to graph an equation. So when you, when you do this, take a look at the first variable of integration. This is y. And this is telling us that y is going from the lower limit, x squared, to y equals x. Those are equations. I can graph equations. y equals x squared is a parabola. y equals x is a line. Looks like that. And then how much of that region do I shade? Well, then I look at the x limits. x is going from 0 to 1, so I'm going to shade that whole region because this is where the two curves meet at 1 comma 1. That's my region right there. So I'll label the boundaries with equations. So this is y equals x squared, and this is y equals x. Reverse the order of integration. OK, so I'm going to draw another picture, same region. But now I'm going to solve each equation for x. This is x is the square root of y, and x equals y. And now I'm thinking horizontal lines. So the new integral is, first I'm going to go well, the, the integrand stays the same, x, y squared. I'm going to go dx, dy. x is going from, so these horizontal lines start at y, and they end at the square root of y. And then for what y's do I have those horizontal lines? Well, up here we know is 1, so 0 to 1. Okay, here's one for you to try. So pause the video, sketch this region of integration, and then reverse the order of integration. OK, hopefully you did that. I'm looking at x. So this is telling me that x equals 2y and x equals 2. If I want to graph that, x equals 2y looks, it's a straight line. It's the same as y equals x over 2. So it's going to look like that, kind of a gradual slope. x equals 2 is a vertical line, like that. And so there's our region of integration. And so this is x equal 2y, or y equals x over 2. 
And now to change the limits of integration, it's the same picture, but now I want to think vertical lines. This is y equals x over 2. So I'm going to integrate. Uh, the integrand stays the same. y times the cube root of x cubed plus 1 dy dx. And then y is going to start, these vertical lines start at the x-axis, which is y equals 0. They end at x over 2. And then the x values go from 0 to 2. Oh, by the way, back to this picture up here. How did I know how much of that region I was getting? Well, y is going from 0 to 1. And when x is 2, y is 1. So I'm getting that whole triangle there. In terms of integration, if you had to integrate one of these, you would not want to go x first. You would not want to do this one because then you'd have to integrate the square root of x cubed plus 1. So this is your preferred order of integration. And we'll practice integrating next. In fact, here we go. So r is the region bound by x equals 0. That's the y-axis. y equals 1. That's a horizontal line. y equals x, the diagonal line. And y equals 3 is another horizontal line. So this is 1, and that's 3. And this is my region in here. Sketch r and evaluate the double integral of 2x ln y dA. So we get our choice of how to set this up. Do we want to go dy dx or dx dy? Well, we want to go x first because if we go y first, think of, think of vertical lines, the lower limit's going to change. For a while, the lower limit is 1, but then it turns into x. So that's bunk. We want to go like this. So our integral is going to be double integral. 2x ln y, we want to go x first and then y. x is going to go from the y-axis, which is 0, to x, sorry, to y. Think of this as x equals y. And then y goes, that's pretty simple, from 1 to 3. So this is the way you have to do your integrals in my class. You cannot do it like the guy in the video, Sousa. He leaves the outside integral there the whole time, and I think you'll see it, this is, my way is actually better than his. I hate to use that word better, but my way is better. Integral 1. Pull out the inside integral and evaluate it. Okay, this one's super easy. Ln y is a constant, so we integrate x, which is 1 half x squared. The 1 half cancels with the 2, and so that's x squared ln y between... 0 and y. And we're plugging the y into the x. So we end up with y squared ln y minus 0, which is just y squared ln y. So integral 2 is the integral from 1 to 3 of y squared ln y dy. Okay, that's parts. So I'm going to let u equal ln y and dv equal y squared dy, du is 1 over y dy, v is 1 third y cubed. So there's my setup. What I'm going to do, normally when I do a parts and it's a definite integral, I do the indefinite integral first and then I put all my limits at the end. I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to say this integral is equal to, I'm going to go uv, one third y cubed ln y minus the integral of v du, which would be one third y squared dy. And I'm just going to say when I'm done, I'm going to evaluate that whole thing between one and three. So we've got one integral to do, and then we can evaluate. So that's one third y cubed ln y minus. 1 ninth y cubed between 1 and 3. So that's, oh, I've got to conserve on space here. So I get 9 ln 3 minus 3. And then when I put in 1, I get, well, ln of 1 is 0, so that's nice. 
0 minus 1 ninth. So I'm going to get 9 ln 3 minus 3 plus 1 ninth. And so this is going to be 9 ln 3 minus 26 over 9. And there's our answer. Okay, this one I'm not going to do out with you since there's a video there. This comes from your homework. So there's a video, you can watch that video. Just let me mention a couple things. You always want to graph your region of integration. Okay, so don't worry about the Z. So there's, here's what's happening. In 3D, there's a surface up here, and you're integrating over a triangular region down here in the XY plane. And so to graph the region in the XY plane, don't worry about the Z coordinates. Notice they're all zero anyway. So just graph the triangle determined by 0, 0, 4, 0, and 4, 4. So, okay, so there's your triangle. So over the XY plane, that's what you're integrating over. And the function you're integrating is this. So you're finding the volume underneath that surface. And I think in the video, this guy's pretty good about showing you the 3D versions, although I find his 3D versions are often a little confusing. But just to set up, I really strongly suggest you integrate with respect to y first. So you'll have 3, 1 plus x squared dy dx. You might be thinking, oh, is this tangent inverse? But it's not going to be. It's, not, it's going to be a natural log because y is going to go from 0 to x. And then where does x go? It goes from 0 to 4. And so when you do your first integral, 0 to x, 3 over 1 plus x squared dy, all of this is constant with respect to y. So you're just going to get 3, three times divided by this times y between these two limits. So I'll let you fill that in. But you're just going to get 3x over 1 plus x squared. And then your second integral is going to be 0 to 4, 3x over 1 plus x squared. And there's where you're going to get your natural log because you're going to do a u sub with u equal to the denominator. So here I am going to do another one with you completely. Find the volume of the solid under this surface z equal xy squared and above the region in the xy plane bound by these two curves. So the curves are x equal y squared and x minus y equals 2. So that would be, let me solve that for x, x equals y plus 2. x equal y squared is a parabola, looks like that. And x equals y plus 2, I have an easier time graphing lines if I solve for y. So y is x minus 2. So that's a line with slope 1, and it crosses the y-axis down there. And so it looks to me like I want to set this up with horizontal lines. So v is going to be the integral from somewhere to somewhere. <laughs> and then x is going to go from y squared to this line here. And this is the line x equal y plus 2. My integrand is xy squared. I'm going to go dx dy. Now I need my limits for the second integral. I need to know this y value and that y value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my two curves equal. And that's a plus, by the way. I'm going to set y squared equal to y plus 2 and solve for y. Okay, so move everything to one side. y squared minus y minus 2 is 0. That's going to be y minus 2, y plus 1. So y is equal to negative 1 or 2. So negative 1 and 2. And that looks reasonable on my picture. That negative 1 is kind of big. So now, take the inside integral out. Integral 1 is the integral from y squared to y plus 2. x, y squared, dx. And so that's, um, remember, y squared is a constant, so that's 1 half x squared, y squared, between y plus 2 and y squared, which is 1 half y plus 2 quantity squared times y squared minus 1 half y to the fourth 
and then I get times y squared. Okay, so this is kind of a mess. We want to clean this up before we do our second integral. I notice here that I've got a one-half y squared in both terms, so let's pull that out and see what's left. For the first guy, I'm left with a y plus 2 squared, and for the second guy, I'm left with a y to the fourth. Okay, now let's expand that. So that's one half y squared, and then foil that out. That's y squared plus four y plus four minus y to the fourth. And then that's gonna be one half, which I'll just pull out of the whole integral. And let's see, we're gonna have y to the fourth. Now I'm distributing the y squared plus 4y cubed plus 4y squared minus y to the sixth. Okay, so that's our second integral. So integral 2. Integral 2 went from negative 1 to 2. And I'm going to take that 1 half, just pull it out, put it there. And then I'm going to integrate y to the fourth plus 4y cubed plus 4y squared minus y to the 6 dy, which is 1 half, put a big bracket there, 1 fifth y to the fifth plus y to the fourth plus 4 thirds y cubed and then minus 1 seventh y to the 7 evaluated between negative 1 and 2. Here's where you know, you might want to use Desmos at, at this point. Desmos will do an improper, I mean, a, a definite integral. It's going to be a lot of ugly fractions. I'm going to go dot, 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 531 over 70 is what I got. But let me show you. Here's Desmos. And I was wondering if it would take a, D, a dy or if I had to change the variable to the dx. But it was happy with this. And so the way I got that integral, I just go... I N T, and then it gives me an integral with a lower limit, you know, like, and then I could put in the upper limit for x dx, and I get an answer. So I don't know if you knew that Desmos did that, but it does. If, you, if you're getting bogged down with a bunch of fractions, that's pretty helpful. Okay, so let's go back to our lecture notes. That's the end of that one. It's the setup that's really the crucial part. And so to that end, I didn't see nearly enough homework practice problems in your homework. So here's a whole slew of practice problems from our old calculus book. Sketch the re Notice in each one, sketch the region of integration, then reverse the order of integration. So here, you're not, I'm not asking you to integrate. I'm asking you to sketch and reverse. And that's just such an important skill. So definitely do those. And then these, I say sketch, reverse, and then integrate. So there's some practice integrating. And here's some volume problems. And so in each case, I gave you solutions. I gave you a sketch and I showed you the, the reversed integral.